Question 69 to 72. Now we have some uh, real organic chemistry. In fact, um, you can use a little bit of nomenclature, a little bit of understanding of redox, and we've already done it. We've done um, several questions in the pink booklet, uh, questions 40 to 42, um, dealt with uh, redox. And if you have gone through the blue booklet, which is also called GAMSAT sample questions, and in that booklet from questions 53, 54, and 55, uh, the wonderful questions on redox as well. And a couple of the questions are remarkably similar to the questions here. And obviously redox has come up multiple times on multiple exams, and so it's something that you should be comfortable with. As I mentioned before, redox for general chemistry and organic chemistry is different. In general chemistry, redox is more reduction oxidation reactions are more concerned with gaining uh, electrons for reduction and losing electrons for oxidation. But for organic chemistry, redox is concerned with oxygens and hydrogens. So to be more precise, oxidation, which is uh, the purpose of this particular passage, has the hallmark of an increase in oxygen content or a decrease in hydrogen content. And so in the reaction that you see before you in your ebook, clearly there was a reduction in hydrogen content, and that means oxidation. And then a rule is given to you. The enzyme effectively removes hydrogen from the alcohol group and a hydrogen atom on the carbon to which this alcohol group is attached. So it must be that you have a carbon where a hydrogen will be removed here, but this carbon also has to have a hydrogen because these two things must happen in order for the reaction to take place. So this famously sets up an issue. You know that when there's only one R group or hydrocarbon attached to a central carbon, that's called a primary carbon. When you have two R groups or two carbons that are attached to the central carbon, this is called a secondary carbon. When you have three R groups attached, you can't be surprised that that is called a tertiary hydrocarbon, or in this case, a tertiary alcohol. So the definition ACER is given. They're telling us that to remove one hydrogen here and remove one hydrogen from the carbon that has the alcohol group, immediately that means we cannot be dealing with a tertiary alcohol because in a tertiary condition, there is no room for a hydrogen to bond to this central carbon. Okay, so let's get to the questions. Question 69. Consider these four alcohols. So, March... 2018, 2,2-dimethyl ethanol is what Acer has written there, and that molecule does not exist. It, it doesn't exist. <laughs> it could be some sort of a propanol or 2-methyl propanol or something like that, but they did write out what they meant by 2,2-dimethyl ethanol, and so it's this, and this is clearly 1,1-dimethyl ethanol. So I'm sure that uh, shortly or soon they will cor correct that typographical error. So we have the OH group on the first carbon, and so we have two methyl groups also on that first carbon. And so this is a tertiary condition, and there is no hydrogen attached to this carbon to be able to be removed in order for oxidation to take place. And tertiary alcohols are famously uh, difficult to oxidize. Next, we have N, hexanol. N stands for normal hexanol. Of course, I didn't put in all the hydrogens that are attached to the carbons. You would be wasting your time during an exam to do that. But I did put the, one of the hydrogens that would be attached to this carbon just to emphasize that this is following the rule of the reaction that Acer provided in which there is a hydrogen available here and there's an OH group here, so that would easily oxidize and produce an aldehyde. You can even name it. That would be called hexanal. And then over here, we would have this hydrogen removed, and on the same carbon, there is an OH group. That could be removed, and now you can name what the product would be. Well, it would be a ketone that would be created here, and it's cyclic with six carbons, so it's cyclohexanone. 
And next we have benzyl alcohol. So here's the benzyl group referring to benzene, and here's an alcohol group. And notice this is not called phenol. If it was a phenol, then the OH group was, would be attached right here. So if you did make that mistake, then you should go through org 5.1 um, in order to look at how to name aromatic compounds. This particular compound can be called benzyl alcohol, or it could be called phenyl methanol. Either way, you see that it follows ACER's rules. There's an OH group, and it's bonded to a carbon that has a hydrogen. In fact, this carbon is a primary carbon, and so the product would also be an aldehyde. And so for question 69, the answer is definitely A, because this is a tertiary condition. Question 70. So question 70 starts with a 2-pentanol, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons means pent, all means there's an alcohol group, and it's on the second carbon. Then the rest are going to be hydrogens, so there's a hydrogen here, so it's, it is available to be oxidized. And so with ADH and NAD, we oxidize this, hydrogen removed from the OH group, hydrogen removed from the carbon, and so we have a ketone, and so we just need to name it one, two, three, four, five carbons. So it's a pentanone. And on the second carbon, there is the keto group. So you can call it 2-pentanone or penta 2 -one. And because this is known as a ketone, you can actually look at this as a keto group. And then you just name what's on the left and what's on the right. So this would be methyl and then propyl ketone. Okay, so moving on to question 71, and so they bring up the issue of methanol and ethanol, and they specifically say catalyzed by ADH in the presence of NAD, so we have both of them there, even though they didn't repeat it in Roman numeral 1 and 2, they did say it clearly in the question stem that both of them were present. So here is methanol methyl alcohol so this is methanol and we have the OH and we have a hydrogen available so that oxidation can take place and then we just need to name this and this is formaldehyde and that's the official name very famous aldehyde of course construction workers are very familiar with formaldehyde the simplest of all the aldehydes and its systematic name would be meth because there's only one carbon, and it ends in al, because it's an aldehyde, so it would be methanol. And now we move on to ethanol, or ethyl alcohol, which the general public colloquially will just call alcohol. We have the OH group in the proper position. We have a hydrogen in the proper position. We can remove these hydrogens, reducing the hydrogen content, which means to oxidize, and then we get our aldehyde. And this is called acetaldehyde or you can do the systematic name for it with two carbons it starts with eth ends in al so ethanol and so for question 71 both are correct we get formaldehyde and acetaldehyde as products and so 71 the answer is d and then 72 is a reward as long as you've done everything uh, properly and um, you wrote things clearly then it's just a summary of what you've already done so answer choice a says the product formed by a reaction of a primary alcohol is a ketone here we have a primary alcohol nope it produces an aldehyde clearly so answer choice a is incorrect answer choice b the product formed by the reaction of a secondary alcohol is an aldehyde okay so let's look for our secondary alcohol and to our groups attached to this central carbon and we produce a ketone so then answer choice B is incorrect answer choice C the product formed by the reaction of a tertiary alcohol can be either an aldehyde or ketone no actually we have already established that a tertiary alcohol will not react because there is no hydrogen attached to the central carbon and so we can't get oxidation and so answer choice C is incorrect, and answer choice D is consistent with all that uh, we've already worked on. So 72, the answer is D. And so you should consider Org 5.1, Chapter 6, and Chapter 7. And I've already mentioned the pink and the blue ebooks. And I will just remind you of this very important redox.
And so here you have it, a primary alcohol being oxidized to produce an aldehyde, a secondary alcohol oxidized to produce a ketone. Of course, aldehydes can be further oxidized to carboxylic acids, but that wasn't the point of this particular passage. But sometimes you will see this further oxidation, but you'll be guided through it.